Welcome back to my Houston Texans franchise rebuild here on Madden 22. And today we will be jumping into week six of this year to see if we can try to turn this season around. Last year we went to the Super Bowl. This year we have started one and four. Season's not dead yet, but if we don't start something soon, it will be. Hey coach, I haven't been as productive as I was hoping to be this year. Having a big game might help me get back on track. Uh, you know what? Sure, we'll make a promise. I, I hear you and understand we're going to do our best to get you involved throughout the game today. Keep your head up and be ready to make some plays. Well, Shark, I don't really think it's your fault. Granted, you have dropped a couple passes, but thanks, coach. I knew you'd understand. I really appreciate you making the extra effort to get me more involved. Well, talk to your quarterback, dude. He's played awful so far this year. And now Laramie Tunsil has come to talk to me. Obviously, we have a short week this week, so not much time to create an elaborate game plan. With that being the case, I want to stress how important it is that we play fundamentally sound football. Definitely. With so little recovery time, a lot of guys are going to be less than 100%, which can lead to sloppy football and mental errors. We've been playing sloppy football and had mental errors all season so far, dude. Exactly, and we're better than that. Stress to the team that it's imperative that we take care of the ball and be the team capitalizing off mistakes rather than being the ones making them. And it looks like Kendall Bibbs has earned an upgrade, so we'll upgrade his man-to-man. -man. Get him to a base 74 overall, and he gets plus three to awareness, one to man coverage, and one to zone. Jordan Brooks also gets an upgrade, but we're not really going to worry about um, the other stats there. We're just going to keep upgrading his top one. Get him to an 88, plus one to block shedding, pursuit, and plus two to zone. And we do have at least one person I want to try to re-sign and just get this done. Center Ross Freeman. He was one of our first draft picks in this series. That's a good offer. I'm glad we got the deal done and we lock him down for at least the next three seasons. I'm also going to try to lock up defensive end Jonathan Greenard. See if we can get him for the next three years. Can you improve the bonus at all? Okay. We are on Thursday night primetime. So I put both teams in their color rush. We are in the blue. They are obviously in the bright orange. And hopefully we can at least finally pick up a win and stop this four game losing streak. All right, let's see how Spitzer and the offense start today. First and 10 from the 25, Spitzer comes out with a pass, goes to the outside and incomplete. Second and 10, Spitzer and shotgun from the 25, 10 55 now to go in the first quarter. He drops back out of shotgun and he will go deep down the right side and miss everybody. He has not had a good year to start. Now third and 10, trying to avoid an opening three and out. Spencer takes the snap and goes downfield. That is caught by Brian Tyson, who will hurdle over a defender, get the first down and step out of bounds at the 39. Like he was playing bad enough. It's kind of to the point where I may start scouting some quarterbacks in the next draft. But here on first and 10, we give it to Ramondre Stevenson and Stevenson powers his way for about an eight yard gain. It was a nine yard gain. Now second and one, Spencer under center. Sanders back in the backfield. And that's where they go with it. Sanders up the middle, gets the first down into Denver territory. Spitzer on a new set of downs from first and 10. will run a halfback draw to Sanders and Sanders has some running room and gets a gain of about seven. Second and four, Spitzer in shotgun. I kind of want to see you throw downfield a little bit to see if you have your like rhythm back at all after that one complete pass to Tyson. He sends Sanders out in motion and he's going over the middle. That's caught by Brian Tyson who is running wide open and has the first down down to the 27. First and 10, Spitzer and shotgun from the 27 will take the snap. Stand in the pocket, go to the outside. That is caught and cutting up field. That is Michael Gallup who breaks a tackle and brought down at the 15. A two yard run from Miles Sanders would set up second and eight. Now Spitzer back under center and going to, I believe that's Cameron Glass up the middle and he will get a gain of about three. Third and five, Spitzer and shotgun from the 10 yard line. See if we can at least get the first down to get a few shots at the end zone. Never mind, he's going here and into the end zone as Michael Gallup touchdown Houston. And we take a 7-0 lead after our first drive of the game. Now it's the defense's turn. From the 24, Teddy Bridgewater comes out under center, takes the snap over the middle. That is caught and dropped. And I just realized I never looked at Denver's depth chart, so I have no idea who most of these players are except Teddy Bridgewater. So on 2nd and 10, Bridgewater will take the snap. And he rolls up to the right. He's going to be under pressure, but he will take off past the line of scrimmage and slide down to avoid getting leveled by Jordan Brooks. Now third and six for this Broncos offense from the 28-yard line. Bridgewater takes the snap. He stands in the pocket. He's going to roll out again, throw on the run downfield. He hits his man. I believe that's going to be Jerry Judy all the way down to the 46 or Cortland Sutton. I'm not real sure which one. Um, Neither. That was Chase Claypool for the Broncos. So from the 46-yard line, Bridgewater goes under center. He will take the snap, play action to his running back. He's under pressure, goes deep down the left side and overthrows everybody. Let's take a mid-game break as I look at the Broncos depth chart because Chase Claypool being there kind of shocked me. So Bridgewater is the quarterback. At running back, they have a 90 overall Javante Williams, who is a superstar now. 
I saw the little emblem under him. At wide receiver, they have an 86 overall Jerry Judy, an 85 overall Cortland Sutton, and an 84 overall Chase Claypool. That is a pretty solid receiving core. At tight end, they have an 88 overall Noah Fant. Left tackles a 77, left guards a 79, center is an 81, right guards a 78, and right tackle is a 71. At defensive end, they have Draymond Jones, who is an 82. At right end, they have DJ Wanham, who is a 75. Hope I said his name right. At defensive tackle, they have an 80 overall and a 74 overall. Outside linebacker, a 76. Middle linebacker, a 76. Right outside linebacker, they still have Bradley Chubb, who is now an 85. At defensive back, they have Patrick Sertain, the second, who is an 86 overall now, and Glenn White, who is a 77. And at safety, they have a 92 overall Justin Simmons. And at strong safety, they have an 81 overall Daryl Coles. All right, now that I know their depth chart, or at least partially, second and 10, Bridgewater and Shagun will take the snap. Play action to Williams under pressure and will be sacked on the play by Raymond Kyle back at the 49. Third and 16 for the offense now from the 49. Bridgewater takes the snap. There's a blitz coming from the corner. He goes over the middle and finds, I believe that's Cortland Sutton for the first down. We blitzed Shelton Peterson on that last play, who was our best coverage corner. Don't really know why we did that, but now first and 10 for the Broncos. Goes underneath, finds Claypool again, and he's going to be brought down at the 24. Second and two, Bridgewater and shotgun from the 24-yard line. He takes the snap, stands in the pocket, he'll step up, throw on the run downfield to an open man, and he's got the catch down inside the 10. From the nine-yard line, Bridgewater goes under center. Williams still in the backfield. They have not given him the ball a whole lot, and that's where they go with it, up the middle. And Javante Williams into the end zone will tie this game up at seven. All right, let's see how our offense does through simulation. We come out on first and 10 and a negative two yard rush from Sanders, second and 12, five from Sanders. So on third and seven, he gets DJ Chark for nine. First and 10, two from Sanders, second and eight, throws it away. Third and eight, throws it away, so we will punt the ball away on fourth down. Somehow AJ Cole only punted the ball 37 yards, but whatever, Denver takes over at the 30 yard line and a four yard rush from Sampson or Simpson, and then an incomplete pass from Bridgewater. Sets up third and six, and they only get a three yard gain, so they will punt the ball now back to Houston. And Spitzer and the offense will take over from the three. First and 10, a three yard rush from Stevenson. Second and seven, a five yard rush from Spitzer. On third and two, a six yard rush from Spitzer. And we head to the second quarter. So now first and 10, another six yard gain from Joe Spitzer. Second and four, he throws it away. And on third and four, he hits Miles Sanders for no gain, so we will punt the ball one more time. Denver takes over at the 27 yard line on first and 10, a seven yard gain from Williams, second and three, a seven yard gain from Sampson. On first and 10, a four yard gain from Williams, second and six, he hits Jerry Judy for eight to give him a new set of downs. So first and 10, nine from Williams inside the 40 now, second and one, two from Williams, and we'll go ahead and jump in here. All right, Bridgewater comes out at the 36 yard line, six and a half minutes to go in the half, handoff to Williams up the middle who breaks a tackle and will fight all the way down close to the marker. I don't think they'll give it to him, but it does set up second and inches for Denver and Bridgewater will come out in shotgun from the 27 yard line with Williams in the backfield. He takes the snap and they go back to Williams who gets the first down this time before being met at the 23. A couple plays later, it is third and six. A chance for the defense to hold him to at least a field goal try. Bridgewater takes the snap. He steps up. He throws on the run downfield and a touchdown for Denver to take a 14 to seven lead. Let's see if our offense can respond to that. Starting at the 25 yard line, Spitzer comes out under center with Sanders in the backfield. He takes the snap and he's under pressure. He goes deep downfield and that will be caught by Brian Tyson who gets around his defender and Tyson will be gone. Houston ties this game back up very quickly thanks to our superstar wide receiver. All right, let's see what our defense can do now. First and 10, three yard gain from Sampson. Second and seven, four from Williams. So on third and three, knocked away by Jonathan Greenard. So we will take the ball back. On the last drive, we went 75 yards in one play. And here we start at the 35 yard line. Spitzer in the pocket now, and he will go deep down the right sideline. And that will be caught and out of bounds. I don't think Chark had his feet in. That leads to second and 10. And Spitzer comes back out in shotgun from the 35 still. And we'll hand it to Miles Sanders up the middle, and Sanders will get brought down after about a two-yard gain. All right, maybe only a one-yard gain. That sets up third and nine. Spencer out of shotgun, takes the snap. Under pressure, goes to the outside. That's caught and forced out of bounds as DJ Chark shy of the marker. Second and eight at the two-minute warning. Bridgewater in shotgun. He takes the snap, stands in the pocket, goes downfield. That will be caught and knocked out of his hands. That leads to third and eight from the 30-yard line. A minute 56 to go here in the half. 
Bridgewater takes the snap and Demarcus Lawrence brings the pressure. He gets to the outside and that will be a pass completed for the first down. Second and four, Bridgewater takes the snap and he goes to the outside. That's caught once again by Sutton and he's got the first down to the 50. Second and 10, Bridgewater in shotgun from the 49. He takes the snap, stands in the pocket, has a little bit of time, goes to the outside. That's caught and brought down immediately by Shelton Peterson. Third and four, Bridgewater in shotgun from the 44 yard line. He takes the snap and it looks like we brought another corner blitz and they're going deep downfield one-on-one -on -one coverage and that is caught in the back of the end zone but he could not get two feet down. Denver will get the ball to start the second half so they come out on first and ten get a five yard gain to Noah Fant. Second and five he throws it away. Third and five he throws it away again so Houston will get the ball for the first time this half. Let's see what they can do with it. First and ten Spitzer throws it away. Second and ten four from Spitzer. Third and six, dropped by Brian Tyson. And on fourth and six, Harrison Bucker missed a 65 yard field goal. So now Denver will take over in really good field position. A one yard gain from Sampson. Second and nine, six to Judy. And on third and three, he throws it away. So on fourth and three, Javante Williams only gets a one yard gain. They went for it. So Houston will take back over. On first and 10, he gets Brian Tyson for a gain of 11. On the next play, he throws it away. So second and 10, he throws it away again. Third and 10, dropped by Brian Tyson again. So Denver takes over at the 20 yard line, first and 10, six from Bridgewater, second and four, three from Bridgewater. Third and one, hits Andy Janovich for nine, or for five, sorry, first down, four yard gain from Sampson. Second and six, four from Williams. On third and two, eight to Cortland Sutton, so they get a first down. And then they come out and hit Javante Williams for a gain of 10 to set up second and one and they get an eight yard gain. First and 10, three from Williams. Second and seven, negative three from Sampson. So on third and 11, he throws it away, but they are within field goal range and they make it. So Spencer comes out with 2.30 to go here in the third quarter, down by three. Let's see what we can do. Spencer takes the snap, stands in the pocket, under pressure, and he will find his man for it close to the first down. I think it's a gain of nine. Second and one, Spencer under center. Sanders in the backfield. That's where they go with it up the middle. And Miles Sanders has the first down to the 42. First and 10. Spitzer going under center. We'll hand it to Miles Sanders. And Sanders to the outside has another first down, this time into Denver territory. Come on, and our guard is injured. That is not great for us. No gain from Sanders on the last run would lead to second and 10. And now Spitzer goes downfield and he finds his man. That's going to be a gain of about eight, I believe. It was actually only a gain of seven. So third and three. Spitzer takes a snap. It's a quick pass and almost gets picked, and that would have been a pick six. So Harrison Bucker comes out to try to tie this game up with 43 seconds to go here in the third quarter. This will be about a 55-yard field goal try. The kick is up, and it is good. As it stands right now, we might be watching a lot of the fourth quarter, and they come out with an eight-yard gain to Cortland Sutton to start, and then a five-yard penalty against the offense would set up second and seven and a negative two yard rush from Williams and that would take us to the fourth quarter and they open it by third and ten heading Noah Fant for 14. First and ten six from Williams second and four eight to Claypool new set of downs first and ten seven to Williams second and three three from Sampson third and one he hits Portland Sutton for a gain of seven. First and 10, Bridgewater and shotgun from the 25 will take the snap and hand off up the middle and he gets nothing on the play. Second and 10, 7.50 to go here in the game. It is a tie ball game at 17. Second and 10, handoff up the middle and that will be a first down run from Javante Williams. A nine yard gain from Williams would set up second and one here at the five yard line. They go right back to Williams up the middle and he has the first down. First and goal, someone on defense please cause a turnover. From the three yard line, he takes the snap, hands off to Williams who breaks a tackle and will fight his way into the end zone. Touchdown Denver, they take the lead. Spencer comes out down by seven, 6.28 to go in the game. Let's see if he can be a franchise quarterback here. Goes to the outside and gets a gain of about four. Second and six, Spencer under center from the 29 yard line, six minutes to go in the game now. He will take the snap and it's a play action to Miles Sanders. He stands in the pocket and then throws to the outside, caught by Boswell and he's brought down immediately for a gain of two. Third and four from the 31. Spitzer and shotgun will take the snap. Stand in the pocket, goes to the outside and that is incomplete. I think that's gonna count as another drop for Brian Tyson and we'll have to punt it away. AJ Cole was able to pin them at the five and then we stopped them for a one yard loss on the next play. So second and 11 from the four. Bridgewater takes a snap, hands off to Williams, and Williams is met immediately after a three-yard gain. 
Third and nine. Bridgewater in shotgun from the seven. He takes the snap. He stands in the pocket, goes downfield, and that will be intercepted on the play by Shaquille Griffin, and we'll take over inside the 15-yard line. All right, Spencer, you were handed a golden opportunity here from the 14-yard line, 427 to go. Takes a snap out of shotgun, goes the outside, caught by Floyd Bryan, and he gets a gain of about three. Spencer under center, Sanders in the backfield. From the 11, he sends Chark in motion. And it'll be a play action to Chark, and then a handoff to Sanders up the middle. He has some blocking. He's got the first down and brought down at the two-yard line. First and goal, Spitzer under center. 3.30 to go in the game. He takes the snap, and he goes to the outside. That will be caught and into the end zone as Lamar Boswell, so we tie the game up at 24. And no, we don't, because Harrison Bucker just missed the extra point. Are you kidding me? Right now, you decide to miss that. At this point, I am starting to regret not bringing back Justin Tucker, even though Butker had better ratings all around. Now first and 10 from the 25. Bridgewater takes a snap. We need another defensive stop, and he finds a wide open Cortland Sutton. What the hell is the defense doing? Now second and eight. We have hit the two-minute warning. Bridgewater under center. We'll take the snap. Hand off to Williams, and Williams will not get anywhere near the first down. Brought down by Demarcus Lawrence, and we burn our first timeout. Third and seven in shotgun if they convert here it's probably going to be the game he drops back to pass goes over the middle and finds a wide open noah fan i believe all the way down to the 38 first and 10 bridgewater comes back out i think this game might be close to done we may have a chance to get the ball back with a little bit of time but we'll have to burn our last time out here second and six bridgewater in shotgun from the 34 he takes the snap hands off to samson and he is brought down in the backfield third and six if we can stop them here we'll get the ball back with a little bit of time but no timeouts it will require a miracle to win this third and six it's going to be a pass play we have not been able to defend the pass all day and we won't defend it here they get the first down and denver will escape with a victory thanks to a missed extra point final score 24 to 23 this one is brutal because we were able to stay in the game the entire time and then lost because of a missed extra point. And like I said, I'm kind of regretting bringing in Harrison Bucker. He had a couple misses in the preseason. Uh, apparently, we tried a 65-yarder with him today, and he missed. I can't really blame him for that one. But I can definitely blame him for the missed extra point. It didn't even say it was blocked. It just said it was no good. Looking at the stats, Joe Spitzer finishes with a QBR of 109.8, goes 16 of 29 for 190 yards and three touchdowns. He didn't play amazing today, but he didn't play bad either. Rushing-wise, Sanders 12 for 50 yards, Spitzer 4 for 21. Receiving-wise, Brian Tyson 5 for 125 and a touchdown. Lamar Boswell 4 for 16 and a touchdown. And Michael Gallup 3 for 28 and a touchdown. Chark won at 100 yards. He caught two passes for 17. So he is obviously not going to get that scenario. Defensively, leading the team in tackles was Grant Delpit with 16. Jordan Brooks came in second with 10. Tackles for loss, Ross Blacklock and Demarcus Lawrence both got two. QB sacks, Ramon Kyle got the only one. And Shaquille Griffin got the one interception, which gave us a chance to try to tie the game. Bridgewater finishes with a QBR of 83.8, goes 22 of 34 for 247 yards, one touchdown and one interception. Javante Williams, 26 carries for 112 yards and two touchdowns. Receiving wise, Portland Sutton, seven for 78. And then Jerry Judy caught the only passing touchdown and three passes for 33 yards. Looks like Ross Freeman has an upgrade. We'll just upgrade his pass protector ability, get him to an 83 overall. Oh, that's great. His morale has dropped him in overall, which means uh, the team is starting to uh, lose faith. Plus one awareness, plus one impact, and plus one to pass block finesse. I didn't think the short week would affect us that much, but clearly it did, and we didn't get the job done. Dude, we've lost five in a row now. I don't think it's the short week at this point. Coach, stopping a dynamic dual threat quarterback like Kyler Murray has proven difficult for many teams. Where does the game plan start for a player like him? contain his scrambling i think it all starts with containing him he's not built like other quarterbacks as a defense you can do everything right and then watch us create something out of nothing that accurately describes kyler murray beat the cardinals and hold kyler murray to under 75 yards rushing well we will be simulating that game so good luck defense so we go from losing in the super bowl and going 11 and 5 and getting into the playoffs last year to starting this season 1 and 5. not exactly the season i had envisioned and our losing streak continues as we drop another one to Arizona, 31 to 19. It looks like Cloud got a little bit of playing time, but not much. Joe Spitzer has a 78 QBR, goes 21 of 40 for 229 and one touchdown. At least he hasn't thrown a pick in a couple games. Rushing wise, Miles Sanders at least at 100 yards on 12 attempts. 
and a touchdown. Receiving wise, Brian Tyson, seven for 84 and a touchdown and no one else really did anything. Defensively, once again, leading the team in tackles was Grant Delpit, this time with nine. Tackles for loss, we only got one, so we could not stop their offense all day. And we got two sacks, Jonathan Greenard and Demarcus Lawrence, and no one got a pick. Kyler Murray finishes with a QBR of 126. He goes 26 of 37 for 261 yards and four touchdowns. Rushing wise, Christopher Kendricks goes 17 for 87. Chase Edmonds, eight for 35. Kyler Murray only ran the ball one time, okay. Receiving wise, TJ Hawkinson, 11 catches, 95 yards and two touchdowns. Rondell Moore, six for 85 and a touchdown. And then it looks like Sterling Lampton, their fullback, caught the only other touchdown. We do have one new injury from that game. Defensive back Pat Bergantz has a partially torn PCL, so he will miss the next four games. We do have a new mock draft to check out, and it looks like we are projected to pick at number two in the draft right now. That is obviously not where we expected to be this year. There are a few quarterbacks if I decide to move on from Joe Spitzer because he really hasn't played great this year. And I think his uh, inability to throw the ball away is a problem. But I was looking at this QB class and no one really is jumping out to me as a better option right now. And we managed to snap our six game losing streak by defeating Indianapolis in overtime. So we are two and six on the season and both wins are against Indianapolis. Spitzer looked like he had a much better game, 31 of 47, 388, three touchdowns. He did throw a pick, but at least we got the win. Rushing wise, Miles Sanders, 16 for 85 and a touchdown. Receiving wise, DJ Chark, 10 for 146 and a touchdown. Michael Gallup, nine for 109 and a touchdown. Lamar Boswell also got a touchdown. Defensively leading the team in tackles was Jordan Brooks today. In terms of sacks, Demarcus Lawrence got one, and then Jordan Brooks and Davon Hamilton shared one. Three tackles for loss, and did we get a pick today? We did not. And Jared Goff goes 17 of 30 for 150 yards and three touchdowns. Rushing wise, Jonathan Taylor, 19 for 110, and Brevin Jordan, seven for 65 and a touchdown against his former team. And Michael Pittman also caught a touchdown, and so did Colby Parkinson. We do have a few upgrades here. Let's upgrade Malik Morgan's speed rusher, get him to an 83 overall, and he will get plus one to acceleration, two to awareness, and two to tackle. Michael Gallup also gets an upgrade. We'll just upgrade his deep threat ability, and let's see what that gives him. It gives him plus two to awareness, one to catch in traffic, one to catching, and one to release. And then rookie backup free safety Alex Van Dyke also has an upgrade. We'll just upgrade his zone. His morale is also low and he gets plus one to acceleration, awareness, pursuit, and zone. We are gonna to try to lock up defensive back Pat Bergantz for the next few years, see if he takes this contract. I'm excited to sign such a great offer and stay with the team, so we at least lock up him for the next three seasons. Bob Holiday's contract is also up and he wants a pretty cheap deal, so we'll offer him that, and we get him for the next two seasons at least. All right, and I have up Jonathan Greenard's signing bonus by a little bit, let's see if he takes that. And he is going to test free agency. Well, that is not good for us. And we actually managed to start a win streak, but we had to do it in overtime again, this time defeating the 49ers 19 to 13. Spitzer once again had a pretty decent looking day, 36 of 58 for 416 yards, only one touchdown though, but rushing wise, Miles Sanders 17 for 51 and Cameron Glass ran in for a touchdown. Receiving wise, Michael Gallup eight for 120, Brian Tyson eight for 87, Boswell eight for 87, and DJ Chark 7 for 77 and a touchdown. Defensively leading the team in tackles was Josh Favors and Grant Delpit. In terms of sacks, Demarcus Lawrence got two, Davon Hamilton got one, tackles for loss, Brooks got one, and Greener got one, and we did not get an interception. Trey Lance goes 16 of 30 for 206 yards and one touchdown. Rushing wise, Trey Sermon goes 16 for 58 and receiving wise George Kittle 6 for 72 and Trey Sermon is the only one to catch a touchdown. Coach you're tasked with facing the Falcons and their high powered offense this week. Where does stopping them start? Uh, we're gonna say constant pressure. It has to be pressure. You start getting to the QB or start getting the QB off a spot consistently and getting sacks or even forcing incompletions and any offense is gonna struggle to have success. We also have a press conference for a QB breakout. Coach, Joe Spitzer is coming off a stellar game. Is he in the process of taking the next step? That's actually a good question, I guess. I mean, he started off the season pretty bad, but I guess these last few weeks he's played pretty well. Yeah, but I think he's been in the process of that for a while now. He worked hard all offseason and his play is speaking to all the time he has spent in improving and striving to be better. Has it though? He did start the season with like a ridiculous amount of interceptions. Throw one or fewer picks and have 400 scrimmage yards or four total touchdowns with QB Joe Spitzer to increase his depth trait to superstar X-Factor. 
it's gonna be funny if uh we increase him to an x factor and then i draft a new quarterback spitzer does have an upgrade and we're gonna upgrade his scrambler trait to try to get him some more break sack and throw on the run and hopefully we actually get that plus two to awareness plus two to break sack plus one to throw accuracy middle and one to throw under pressure Sheldon Peterson also has an upgrade, and you guys know the drill at this point. He is just going to get a man-to-man -man upgrade here, go to an 86 overall. And let's see, he gets plus one to acceleration, awareness, plus two to, pre plus two to play rec, and plus two to press. Grant Delpit also gets an upgrade. We'll upgrade his run support, see if we can get that a little better. And he gets plus three to play rec and plus one to tackle. Our starting tight end, Lamar Boswell, we will upgrade his vertical threat, get him to an 82 overall. And he has plus one awareness, plus one to break tackle, plus two to catch in traffic, plus two to deep route, plus one to pass block power, run block, run block finesse, and short route. Sixth round receiver Gabe Wada will just upgrade his deep threat because that's really all he's ever going to be on this team most likely. Plus one to catching, deep route, medium route, plus two to release, and plus one to spectacular catching. And then Miles Sanders also has an upgrade, we'll just upgrade his elusive back, get him to an 89 overall. And let's see, he gets plus two to carrying, one to juke move, and two to spin move. And our small winning streak comes to an end as we drop one to Atlanta, 31 to 21. And Spitzer is not going to get that X factor. He goes 17 of 31 for 183, one touchdown, and one interception. Rushing-wise, Sanders, 15 for 82 and two touchdowns. Receiving-wise, Boswell, three for 62. And Brian Tyson caught the only touchdown. Defensively, leading the team in tackles was Kendall Bibbs, who was filling in for Pat Bergant, so he played pretty well. Sacks, Jonathan Greener got two, Demarcus Lawrence got one, Ramon Kyle got half of one, and so did Jeremiah Motes. And interceptions, we once again did not get a pick. Tony Youngblood absolutely carved us apart. 23 of 30, 365 yards and four touchdowns. Rushing-wise, Kareem Hunt, 19 for 75 yards. Receiving-wise, Justin Jefferson, eight for 163 and two touchdowns. And Andrew Anderson, six for 74 and two touchdowns. And then we managed to beat Kansas City 35 to 25 in the next week, so we improved to four and six. And it looks like Spitzer had one hell of a day, 23 of 35 for 294 yards and four touchdowns. Rushing wise, Sanders 16 for 65, receiving Brian Tyson five for 95, Gallup six for 78 and a touchdown, DJ Chark seven for 70 and a touchdown, Lamar Boswell three for 39 and two touchdowns. Leading the team in tackles was Jordan Brooks with 16 tackles for loss. Demarcus Lawrence got the only one. Sacks, Demarcus Lawrence got two. Puno Ford got one. And then Brooks and Jonathan Greenard shared one. And we managed to get two interceptions today. Jordan Brooks and Sheldon Peterson both got one. Patrick Mahomes goes 25 of 37 for 303 yards, one touchdown, and two interceptions. Clyde Edwards Alaire goes 14 for 62 in a touchdown. Mahomes, two for 11 in a touchdown. And receiving wise, Quan Haywood, 8 for 139. And then Monte Weston, 5 for 68. And their one touchdown. Well, one passing touchdown. So it is our bye week here. So we have this press conference. Coach, being in last place heading into the bye week means that this time off could be crucial in figuring out how to right the ship. Any special plans for the week off? We could stay grinding, get a little bit of XP. I don't think it's a whole lot. Self scouting, get some awareness, but lose some stamina or team bonding retreat to get more morale let's do self-scouting because awareness is big and overall and i think overalls matter a lot when simulating as a staff we're looking back at all our film this season to identify or clarify where our strengths and weaknesses are okay we only get plus seven awareness for one game but since we're at the bye week let's take a look at some season stats joe spitzer at 3100 yards 19 touchdowns and 12 interceptions he has thrown 14 picks no more no less in every year of his career this year, it looks like he may be able to top that, and I think he's kind of taking a step back in every other stat category, too. Rushing-wise, Miles Sanders has 142 carries for 633 yards and 7 touchdowns. Receiving-wise, Brian Tyson, 57 catches, 863 yards and 5 touchdowns. DJ Chark, 56 for 769 and 3 touchdowns. Gallup, 5 for 598 and 3 scores. And Lamar Boswell leading the team in touchdown receptions with 8. Leading the team in tackles, probably not a shock to anybody. Jordan Brooks with 98. Leading the team in sacks, Demarcus Lawrence already has 14. And interceptions, Jordan Brooks has 2. Pat Bergantz has 2. Shaquille Griffin has 1. And Shelton Peterson has 1. All right, so in the next video, we will watch this game against Seattle. And really, unless we win out here, I don't think we really stand a shot at making the playoffs at all. So depending how that game goes and the next simulations go, that could be the final video for this season because this season has been a major disappointment and 
I honestly expected a lot more out of this team this year. We still have good ratings. We are an 86 overall team. I don't know how we're losing some of these games, honestly. But yeah, hopefully you guys enjoyed this video. And in the next one, we could be wrapping up season four. But if we win out, I guess we have a shot at the playoffs. But I somehow don't see that happening.